Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Being Wendy. My name is Wendy, aka Mama Dina, and I do videos on motherhood, lifestyle, and anything I feel like telling you guys about. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button to get notified anytime I post a video. Yeah, so today we're back to doing our interviews, and today I have a really special guest. She's special to me. She's my classmate, and when I met her, um, I had that feeling of. Do you know that feeling when you've met someone and you're like, oh my god, she can really relate to me completely? That's how I felt about Melville. And it's because she's a mom. So I think she should just tell us, um, tell us your name, what you're doing. Um, of course, you're doing love with me, <laughs> first year. But yeah, just tell us a rough introduction about yourself. Hi guys, my name is Melvin Gogo and I'm Wendy's friend, <laughs> new found friend, Wendy's classmate. Um, I'm a new student. I am a business person, I'm a mom, a sister, and many other things. Yeah. Um, the Jackie of Wall is true, 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 true. How old is your son? My son is four. Towards imagine, the end of four, imagine, yes. she looks like this. Um, so, <laughs> uh, when we met and she told me about her being a mom and the struggles she'd gone through, I was like, wow, 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 you guys need to listen to this story. Because for me, it was that. It really inspired me to want to become better and to work, to work harder. I guess that's, that's what I can say about you. I wanted to, know, to want to really put in the work. Yeah. Anyway, so tell us. Um, so clearly, you have a child. So you found sorry, out you're pregnant. Sorry, I didn't say. Mama, AKA Mama Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mama Tyler. Mama Tyler. So Mama Tyler. <laughs> um, at what age were you when you found out you're pregnant? Mm -hmm. And tell us what your reaction was like. How did you feel about you, like, you positive? So, <clears throat> so, this is me, um, this is the uh, year, uh, actually it was, it was in July. Yeah. I was turning, I was turning, I was turning 20. Yeah. I was, I was, yes, I was turning 20. 20. Yeah. And being pregnant was the least, was the least of my expectations. Yeah. Like, it is something I never even thought about. So my partner, my then partner, <laughs> yeah. my then partner, who's now baby daddy, asked me, have you seen your period this month? That was around, my birthday is on 25th. So that's around 20th, 23rd, and I'm like, no, but mine are not very regular. I, so, uh, yeah. so I'm not worried they can come on 31st, on 1st of August, they'll still come. And he's like, I think you, I think you need to take a test. And I'm like, does it mean that men? I think men have that sometimes that, true, that because of feeling. Just for, similar. Yes, for that feeling. And I'm like, I don't think so. But the moment he said that, I got so scared. Yeah. And I was like, I can't. It can't be, it can't be me. Yeah, like you are foolish. And I'm like, how, how do you say that? Yes, <laughs> and, and I'm like, you made me pregnant. How? Did you make me yeah. pregnant? If you didn't, then why are you asking me yeah. if I'm pregnant? And he's like, I think you. So I take one day, two days, the third day I decide if I think I can do it. Buy that kit and we, <laughs> you know that waiting moment. Yeah, you see the like line. We put the yes, those things and then we wait for the things. And then it was like two is it two lines? Yeah, it's two lines. <laughs> it's two lines. Yeah. When I saw those lines, I was like, no. I was in denial, oh. and and I was in denial for a very long time. Yeah. For I was in denial for a very long time, and I told myself, I think I'll just wait until he's here, like, or I see this stomach Bam. going up. Oh yeah. Up, you know, yeah. And it was like, you know, there's a pregnant for me. Let me just go to the hospital now to confirm. The main hospital yeah. so that I can confirm. And then between me going to the hospital and this day, I started falling sick. Now I'm just feeling. It. And I'm telling him, I even went to the doctor and told the doctor, I have malaria, it's nothing else, it's just malaria. <laughs> <laughs> it's malaria. Yeah. And and he's like, have you seen your periods? I'm like, they are coming. They are coming. So you are they are coming. And he tells me, I want you to go take a test. I didn't take that test. I took whatever he had written and went home. Yeah. And I didn't take that test. And he's like, and the doctor was, a, he was actually a young doctor. I think he was, what do you call them? These people know this from mm -hmm. Yeah. And he, like, and he was also very young. He's like, I need to have a kid at your age. He's like, who said I'm pregnant? I'm not pregnant. Oh. And he's like, just go take the test. After that, you can come with me. 
that's a year. He's oh, hit. Oh, I get, you know, I get what you mean. And I'm like, fine. Me and I start to go to so I just walk out and I go, I sit outside the lab and I'm like, am I ready? Why do you want to do this? But I'm not pregnant, so I just go home. I no, this is how, this is what the doctor said. Yeah. Like that, but if he's also asking me to take a pregnancy test, then we could just rely on whatever you have now and let's wait until you know, yeah. really. And then, um, and at this point, I'm, I'm starting to hate him because I think, I think yes, I think he's because this was like my my very first sexual encounter. Uh, so I'm thinking of and I think this guy did, did this on purpose. Yes, and, um, and, and you feel like your yes, life is going to yes, just. And he's like, you know, you're like, you're going to be a better man, and I just want if it's you who's ha- who has my baby, then I want that. And I'm like, that in my dream is so much. I don't even want to have kids. <laughs> But then, um, um, can I ask, um, do you think mm-hmm. when you look back, like, did he have, like, do you think it was, he was very supportive, mm-hmm. number one, and do you think he took it well? Do you think he took it well, like, he was like, okay, okay, fine, we have this situation like this, um, I think I'm ready to do this. Was he positive about this thing, Mama? Back then? If you had asked me that question then, I would have said, yeah, my boyfriend is very, very supportive, supportive you know, very loving. he loves kids, but a man loving kids and a man actually accepting his own responsibility as a dad, I'm very, very different, different. Yeah. because he was like, you know, we have this kid, and I'm like, okay, so our next step is, you were a student, I'm a student, we had met in class, yeah. I was previously <laughs> in J yeah. we had met in class, and so he's like, we, you know, nine months in India, actually, he was very young that. In India, me and us do what we want to do because nine months is a very long time. We can make up something, we can do business, we can, we can look for jobs. Wow. When the baby is coming, yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, he's very supportive. And then but, now? But now, looking back, he wasn't. Should have been, he feel wasn't, like he should have been yes, because a bit this, more prepared. Yeah, but how was I supposed to be prepared as a student and two year old? Because having a baby was never and even you wanna get you know when when you're young you make this goes and I was like, I think I'll I'll have kids at thirty. Yeah. I'm a master, uh, I, have my degree, I have my you know, I've bought a house, I've bought a car for my kids. However, like I feel like these goals we put for ourselves mm-hmm. are from an external like how society has made us view life. Because I mean, look at you now. Yes, the struggles of being the mother, mm-hmm. and this, I mean, because you're raising this child practically on your own. Um, there's the struggles of be- being a mother and maybe being a student or whatever, but it's not something you'd say you regret, is it? First, when I got pregnant, maybe I'm not, I wasn't the type of people who terminated. I wasn't going to terminate. And he knew, he knew that. And it's something I had made, I had made a that decision back in high school when we had this because of me to us and I knew about the effects of abortion and blah blah blah. So I had made up my mind that at any point of all, wherever I live, I'll never get terminated. And so I, I decided to keep it and even run out from home just to yeah. my pregnancy. Tell us, tell and us about <laughs> running away from home. How how did you do it? What happened? Um you told your parents before. No, but, okay, didn't tell my parents. What happened? I was in two point two the VAT. So, um, I was supposed to go for attachment. But di- during this period of attachment, I was supposed to be defining my, my services. So I decided, because my attachment letter is ready, let me take it. And I take it and went to the master. For attachment. For attachment. So, yes. <laughs> yes, I was hiding. At that point, I was like two months or two and a half or maybe a little bit. My mom had started noticing me being a bit. So they always know. Yeah. But I was like, she was like, you have a flat tummy, but it's like, una, una, una adult, but was like, yeah. mom squeezing a kula, <laughs> na kuna, na kuna adisupu, so yeah. this can't be anything yeah. else. So I ran off. I'm just calling it I ran off because that's your thing. And, and how did you survive there? I got this. Who's paying your bills? I'm getting there. Yeah. I got this attachment, and this attachment was paying me 10k. Mm-hmm. That was, yeah, 10k. So this 10k is what I used to survive. I paid my rent using this 10k. I fed myself using this 10k. I did everything using this 10k. What I assumed was I wasn't going to buy clothes. No. 
I wasn't going to do anything like Zarya's. I was just going to pay rent and feed myself and yeah. maybe transport. And and I remember walking some months, I must sometime during the month I would walk from work to go to join the same goal. Yeah. Because I said train as in as in Indonesia. Oh una <laughs> pesa. <laughs> I guess when you say you see I'm new in Mombasa, I'm yeah. in a place, a certain place to be put in a truck or where I'm going to be. At first I got accommodated, then after getting the job, I, I moved to my place. Yeah. I, I, I slept on a mattress, I did those things, and I'm pregnant. Like I'm struggling. Heavy. Yes, and also tiny. What do you want to say? What happened to this baby? You know, yeah. what happened to this baby? Why is she pregnant? So that's how I survived. You see, at this point, but though my parents don't know that yeah. I'm pregnant, nobody knows I'm pregnant. So at what stage did they find out? I told my mom when I was seven months. Mm -hmm. what did she and the reason I told her is because a certain neighbor of mine who had a child, I in Kamba. I'm <laughs> saying in Kamba because she was funny as in <laughs> the way she told me yeah. it was so funny. She was like so what happens when you go <laughs> to that bed and then you don't wake up? Oh. What happens when you die? You know, she's so scared. So to Kivuka Mwaka 2015, I, I called my mom and I told my mom, by the way, Mjuku Anakuja. It was like, she was surprised, but then she was like, okay. So we need to talk about this again. But I told her mom, I would appreciate if you didn't share this information with anybody else. Yeah. So I kept it. But I'm suffering, you know. I'm yeah. suffering because I don't even know how I'm going to do this. First of all, this attachment, the moment I'm not working here, I'm not going to get paid. Yeah. My baby daddy, I asked him, did you tell your parents that you're expecting, you're, you're expecting a child? And he was like, no, I'll not tell them. Now I'll tell them once you get a baby. And I'm like, what? I mean, I'm, I'm even in the worst position. Yeah. Like, my father, you know, I can't even... So he's like, when God that you at him, what's your problem? You know. Saizo yako na kuru is continuing this education. At least, mimi ni kwa mbasa. Yeah, but at this time, would you say you started seeing that chances are wewe kuprezumi to ipe kiyako wa hai? Ama you still had hope? I had, I had hopes, but in one as in, then you were like 50-50. I knew we are going to raise, we were going to raise this kid together. But, Nilikuwa ni shawa na we can't be together at all. Nilikuwa ni mwana chances that me and him being together was very silly. First of all, because when I got pregnant, things had been, things had changed. Our arguments always turned to physical fights. And even now that I'm pregnant, we're still getting physical. And it was just, it was just a bad situation. Like me and Nilikuwa ni mwana, I don't think I'm going to survive here for a very long time. And if we do, then maybe let me just wait until I get this baby, maybe things will change. But just but I'm that's not, a leg you tell ourselves a lot. Yeah, Sim Simondo, yes, in Simondo, we are still here. Yeah. And I'm not even thinking about seeing other people or anything because I have a family. Maybe I was like, I have a family, I'm going to raise my family. Yeah. This child is going to call the father and the mother together. But I wanted, I was praying that I hope this person just changes, you know, the way he's handling me, and even the way he was handling me, and I'm pregnant, I go for work. Like, he would come to Mombasa, me, I'm, I'm going to work, I would come back, this is my house, so he's come to visit, I would come back, and he would expect me again, very pregnant, for him. And when I raised that issue, like, why can't you help me? And he was like, but I see women around who they, 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 they have two kids, they are pregnant, they come back, take care of their husbands, they take care of their other children. So what's the problem? So yeah. you just do what other women do. And I'm like, really? It's also yeah. my first time being pregnant. Why can't yeah, you pass on yeah. And I remember there's a time I spent a night of law. And this is my house. But I spent this night of law because we were fighting. And this person told me, you're not going to sleep on this bed. And at that point, we didn't have a It's okay. We didn't have a Yeah, so, um, wow, this is, I didn't know some things. <laughs> I knew some things, but I didn't know stuff. I know. Um, what would you tell someone? Mm -hmm. Let's talk now more in the aspect of the relationship. What would you tell someone who finds out they're pregnant? And how do you think the guy should react? Like, for you to be able to feel safe in that mm -hmm. space. Because you're telling me, like, if you sit back, if you sit now and remember, you're like, uh-uh, 
these are red flags. Like say you don't these are red flags. But at, at that time you didn't see those red flags. What are those red flags? Um violence. Mm-hmm. And violence doesn't just mean being physical like someone is beating you up slightly. Violence could be the way this person talks, talks to you. Because una 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 do at the time they used to wake up in the morning and they go but let me go to work because yeah. I need to get out of this place. Mm-hmm. I need to get out. The way this person handles you, mm-hmm. when you say you are sick, do they tell you that I think you're pretending too much? Yeah. Do they tell you I think too many. I think you are I think maybe you 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 exaggerating yeah. how are they taking how you I think also how, how um how they take the news and in a scenario where you guys are both in school if he will be very willing to talk to his parents because I think it's very wrong for the girl to go tell the parents no you ako hapa na yeye kusema you know it doesn't mean okay to yeah. me it just never made sense yeah. to me it shows your commitment to the relationship yeah so and, and then you see at that, at that point who is enforce you can when they can't force you until when you are going to tell your dad yeah you yeah you can't that you're pregnant you can't force them but the way this person talks to you especially when you're carrying this child a lot of things change when you're pregnant when do you want to go something yeah things, some things you're not even really change you're not, you're not even yourself but how is this person person handling the new hmm? because yeah he need is I got in touch nothing is going to change about it so how is he taking the new you that is you know yeah and for me i wasn't even that was like yeah you're not even like that yeah i wasn't and even at that point i wasn't like he didn't hate people yeah. I wasn't that was like but he was very hostile to me in fact he was being very hostile that do we have to find every now and then especially when you need to get into bed all i want to do is sleep or if i say i want to sleep to be quiet my child i'll sleep <laughs> and just wake me yeah. up when, when we get there mm. don't attack me yeah so you've told us most of your journey and you've told us how your parents reacted blah blah you know how the guy was you give us advice So I want you to tell us how how do you manage now you're in law school you're in this form I mean that's that's a it's a cool and should be how do you how do you handle it what's happening give us a rough idea of how so um, um my family is okay yeah okay they need to be safe of course yeah they need to be safe yeah so after I got the baby I put it to work because I don't know how to speak to this to me when you say sasa and there is one actually the father here is in the school he told me to bring the baby daddy and the delayed car and told me I'll be no such thing and went to for me so I said it fine the daddy has rejected my baby <laughs> yeah. and my father has also rejected it yeah. because it's like rejection so I can't see the child and you can't see Let's do that. Right passage. So, I got into working. I do a lot of things. When you hustle, me the hustler. The real hustler. Yes, me the part. There's nothing you, you can't I do. It. So, I I got into working when I was doing things. Yeah. So, um I've been able to take care of my child and also my family help me. Yeah. My, that is my family my mom and, and her sisters. And it's not been easy even my family accepting me because they're like We sent you to go and study a man. Yeah. You know you were supposed to take care of yourself, but you brought this up. Yeah. But I feel like um, we should, you know, the consequences of your action. Yeah. I always say this thing yeah. every day. Choices are consequences. A protected sex chances yes. are high you get yes. pregnant. Yes. And you get pregnant, yes. especially in a space where you've been taken to school. You need to accept that people will be disappointed. Yeah. As much as we might say, oh, so many people are alive. You need to accept that these people they face for you when study, but then something different happen. You just have to accept the situation. For me, I don't think I was ever mad that my parents were upset or anything. I just knew they needed space and time to accept. Until today, we are good because I, I I allowed them to get mad and get over it. And once the baby comes. Things change. They, they actually become closer to him than me. To, you know. To, to, to. And and then I think I, I thank God for that because my son has never asked me where the dad is because I've had yes. my brothers, my cousins, my uncles, yes. 
No, he's just I know yet. Yeah. And I just want us to get to uh, at least by the time we just get to show we are in a place we are going to have a conversation. But, yeah. You know, and want, you will tell what you tell me. I'm going to tell him the truth. Because when before I joined the group, okay, when I decided to join the school, I looked for this guy and begged him. I literally begged. I begged him and told him, please help me with China. And he accepted. <laughs> but that was on text. He was like, yeah, I'll take care of him, blah, blah, blah. And then he told me, contact me again next week. <laughs> so that we can discuss the thing with these things. When I contacted him, he was posted on my Nokia sticker. regardless of what comes and and it's it's it doesn't it is after pampas it's also you have to pay, to pay a caretaker you always have to as in there's so many things and it's not just about it's not about finance our kids get to a place to a place you may not even understand yeah it's always the attitude there's attitude there's them wanting attention which sometimes they're not able to to do you, yeah. you, you have to go to school. You have to do those side hustles. If I was to stay with Tyler here, then I have to work. Yeah. And at the same time, go to school. It's going to be hectic. When I come back, I have to give him homework. I have to give him food. I have to, to give him that attention. It's not easy. And so, you get to ask. Did, did, I, did I make a mistake of what I'm waiting? Yeah, I get. Should I have terminated pregnancy and then, you know, the like, continue with my life. Yeah. Then I'm like, you want to tell me my life would still be existing without Tyler? Because I can't, I can't yeah. imagine my life without him now. Like, yeah. he's, in as much as he's not here, but he's always, he's always in my heart and in my yeah. mind. Whatever you do, you know. When I wake up, day. yes, when I wake up, it's him. I eat, it's him. Mm. And so it's, it's the love. And because things are, even when things are hard, I love him and I love him. I love him. Yeah. Because of that love, I never give up on us. And it's and now okay. it's very, it's making us very emotional. Yeah. And I get where you're coming from. And and, and also because why did I have to pay when I didn't come with this child? We both made this child. Yes, that's that takes me to this part. I know as Mostly for the women who are raising kids alone, because I know there are more single mothers than single dads. And for maybe most of the single dads, maybe it's circumstantial, maybe the mom passed on or something like that. Like it's very rare to find a situation where the mom walked out. Yes. So Though there are, are but, yeah, not really but not as many. Yeah. However, mm-hmm. being um, a mother, we may never understand why someone would not put effort into their child the way we do. Yeah. That's that's something we, I don't think I'll ever understand. And why now um, me the mother has to go and bend? Yeah, you know, yeah. I, have to, I have to come to the HR in your office or I have to, to go to, to have your parents. That's and what, that's my next question. I don't know, it's going to be on a lighter <laughs> note. But I asked this on my Instagram, I want you to tell me. Because you've told me before that you've tried this. You've tried making this one responsible for his actions. Yeah. Tell us what happened when you tell us what what you did and what happened and what. <laughs> we, live, we live in a in a really for Kenya. Kenya. Yes, and it's a double standard. I don't yeah. because these people, according to the laws that are there, according to how people argue, is that abortion is not allowed. Yeah. At the same time, this country will never force a man to take responsibility of his children. If anything, actually, I think this lawyer Nelson Harvey went to court last yeah. year saying that kids that are not born inside the marriage yeah, should not true. even be allowed to inherit yeah. their father's property. And I'm like, okay. So you want, because his argument is, we, the, the, the women, yeah. we want to trap. Yeah. So you want to tell me, it's us who initiate the sex. Is it really? <laughs> in most instances, I think it's the men who initiate the sex. Yeah. But okay, either way, mm-hmm. whether or not I initiated the sex or I'm trying to trap you, you also have the responsibility yes. as a man to be more careful yeah. about what you're doing and who 
what you're doing and with who you get. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's a possibility also. It's a possibility. Yeah. So, me, I would. Yeah, I am. I need help with a child, so I go to. This is a funny part. I went to the end of chief. <laughs> because in Waka, I didn't know where the chief was. So yeah. I went to the chief and I told the chief, Sister, I want you to help me to connect me to the children's office for mm -hmm. Waka in this county. And, and this poor family, I don't even know why they're still in office up to this day. Yeah. And this chief tells me, mm -hmm. That's the only thing you And he's like, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to and he looks at me and he's like, no, I'm talking about it, 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 you know, he's like, you know, you look like a child, and I'm like, please, just, I just need help, I don't want to talk right now, I just need help, so I call, he gives me the number, I call this madam, I was in school, and I call her, and I tell her, now this is the issue, and this is how I need help, and she asked me, who am I going to find out, and I tell her, I'm not very sure, but I'm sure he does something, something whether yeah. it's business or employment, I'm sure he does something. And, and she's like, oh, can I pay sleep yet and come here? How would I get a pay sleep? And, and you don't even talk? Yeah. And I think it's an issue. Okay. And you know what she tells me? That my duty is just to write to, to maybe come and tell him this is the amount you're going to pay. So Mimi, come up. Mama Toto, I'm supposed to go to the hustle. The hustle know where he works, how much he's getting paid, where he lives, what position he is, how much he can pay, and then just do it. And you see, this is not possible. This is not a good thing. Yeah. How would I go? And how how do you want me to take care of this gentleman? You know what I do. Yeah, I'm okay, and then what did they tell you about if he's not working? But if he's not working, just at a take care of the child, how will he be able to take care of the child if he's not working? That is what they are asking. Why are you asking me that? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, me and my students, I'm going back. You're to not school. also working. Yes, yeah. I'm not able to. Because it's what we're going to do with Yeah. I couldn't. I'm in class, but I'm like, so. Yeah. Joining and I'm And. That is hard to break in. So, you're telling me um, the systems are a bit. What can you say? Dysfunctional. Um, yeah, they're very dysfunctional. Yeah. Because the only at, at the only point they take they take action is when they know that this is a civil servant. Um, they know this is an MP and an equal investor, and so they are going to enforce it and I think they also make some money. But the day people who need help at this point, at these mothers who, who are not working, at least right now as you're supposed to bring half and you pay half. It's fine. You will get let me take half and you take half. Because even even in our friendly discussion, we even call it friendly when I approached you, let me bring all things. Take care of this. I'll take care of school fees and the housing. Let me take care of the food, the, the shelter, and the baby, or whatever. Yeah. So why can't we can't the, the, the administration or the government or whoever just take that? You know, yeah. why can't they enforce yeah. that? Because in some countries, the dad will actually be forced to take charge, yeah. and if not, they will be But in this case, they take it on a very light amount. So. I would really like to know if any of you has ever been successful in forcing <laughs> child support on someone. I would really like to leave this comment down below. Yes, because again, when he... But I know there's a girl who went to his HR. Mm -hmm. I would really like to know the process of that. But now, in a case where this, because for my baby daddy, so what I hear, he's not employed. He's not for my employee. Ah, he but he's in his business. So we took a mini one. Because nowadays, they even know. They write everything and that they are maybe their sisters or their mothers. So me I'm trouble. Now me when I take a look at what do want as in what what does these people expect as moms to do with these children? You know, we should just be forced to take responsibility. Yeah. However, to save yourself the heart, <laughs> yes, don't go through the struggle. The energy I have maybe just you know, save it for yourself yeah. and the heart so yeah I feel like most people should save themselves the drama, the trauma, the struggle, the tears. I feel till till the, the point where we can see our systems are in place and they can be able to work effectively. Probably yeah, because most of the ladies in my inbox are telling me they wouldn't give them time anymore. Because mm -hmm. why would you force someone to take care of their own? And someone else also said eventually they will come back. Whether they go, they eventually come back. How true that is, I only know. But in many situations, I've heard that they've always come back. 
at it for 20 years. Uh, Rudy. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know they'll come back. But that is not a consideration you give to somebody who is really straining financially, emotionally. And because, because once once you're strained financially, then I can assure you that everything in your life is going to be strained. How you handle your child, because that's a point that you can do after. Yeah. You angry at yourself, you angry at your child. Everything. That's everything, yeah. But anyway. But now you're good. Now you're trying. You're doing really well. No, but even when I needed help, I just needed help for, for some time. You understand? Just for some time. But since you accepted the fact that you're raising this child on your own, you can yeah, say you've yeah, gotten yeah, some yeah, peace, yeah, peace, yeah, peace, yeah. peace of mind. Peace of mind. And actually, let me tell you, the only thing that I'm going to say is that this person even denied my son the right to have a son. Oh. You couldn't, he refused to. Every time I asked for his credentials to prove that certificate, he always posted. But I can tell you this for a fact, it's probably better because eventually you'll be needing his credentials and his papers to apply for other things, for tell you. Things like passports and things like that. If his name was the birth certificate, you'd need those things. So probably he saved you the chance. It's okay. Yeah, it's really just standing. I was yes, I was mad and I was angry and and you see, still I'm for I'm for my son. These children have to do the truth. Yeah, you know they really have to do the truth. Even in the future, I don't know what the future holds, but I I would be trying to hide and tell and tell you, you know, your father, 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 you know at a home to be to be with that day. Yeah. You understand? Because it also hurts the child. But I'm accepting it and, and you know what? I'm going to be with it. I'm and really going to be with it. Yeah. Yeah? We are going to have But I think Tyler knows that you will do your best. He will understand. He will. He will eventually. And, and Tyler, Tyler is like me. Yeah. One thing that really makes me proud is I can see. I can see, see how he's strong. Yeah. He's, yeah. Yeah. he's also very really independent. Because I'm also being related to my mom. Yeah, you sometimes, do. Sometimes I'm not, I just feel like I'm not good enough. But I love him. It's, it's normal. It's normal. We are always. We are always and, and because of that love, we are going to try yeah. Thank you so much for being part of this uh, series. I've really enjoyed this and I've learned so much about you. Yeah, and, and also, mm. something I want to say that there is no shame in this about the same thing. <laughs> a friend of mine told me that if you miss the Azan, that may have gone the same that in future, what if they they mm. they destroy this really up and up and there's really no shame in using contraceptives, and I think girls, if you're not married, <laughs> stop it with stop it with the the P2s. Pitus mm. will will cause more harm than you. Yeah. And then just subscribe to some is it some stick mm. some contraceptives mm. because at the end get day, it's your talk to a doctor who will yes, advise you. Yeah. Yes, go get help because the consequences are more expensive than yeah. this contraceptive. So do something and then just if you're in a position to get advice from your girlfriends, please get it. You cannot advise a girl in love, but please girls in love to so advise yeah. a boy. You know, try your best to, to get advice. And if you have kids, take care of them and please the love you have for them, let it be. And if you also want to be a, a parent fully, get help when you feel like it's too many. Yeah. Get help because you are you don't want to get toxic. We have so many broken boys and girls out here and we don't want to be that person who just lives up and yeah. broken generation. So get help. There's no shame in that. I also had to get help. Yeah. And sometimes I have to run away from my responsibilities as a mom and be myself, be a child, so that you can come back and be a good mom. And then you come back. Don't share away from the people. And then also be strong enough to, or be vulnerable enough to ask for help. My, my people reached out to me and told me, we'll take care of the child. Yes. Finally. Take, take, take care of that child. You know, and, and they just gave me to the call and I was like, sometimes, like, I had friends who used to tell me that, you know, when your child is staying with other people, they're not involved with that child. But I was like, I, I'm not going to listen to people. If I can't do this on the phone, then I'm going to help. And I'm accepting that help. I'm really, really accepting that help. 
because I know it's just a matter of time and then we are coming back. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> so when it's I know people we get overwhelmed. I get emotional. Yeah. So. And it's normal. Sometimes there are days when I used to wake up and cry. Like, I sleep inside yeah. trailer, I'm crying. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to leave a comment on this one. Bye.